The midway is empty now. The exhibition barns are locked up. The aromas of cotton candy and corn dogs have faded to a memory. But just across the street from the now shuttered state fair, a swarm of volunteers, some of whom actually live here, toil to keep the carnival spirit alive. This is a compound in the midst of a blighted Detroit neighborhood. But one night a year, it's magically transformed into the most elaborate, over-the-top Halloween party imaginable. And it's called Theater Bazaar. Ladies and gentlemen. I love being a part of this. Theater Bazaar is the greatest thing in the world. It allows us to escape. It allows us to be kids. It allows us to be free and witness the greatest masquerade on earth. The costumes are mandatory at Theater Bazaar, and it's not because it's just a Halloween party. It's because it's an entryway into another world. When you leave the city streets out there and you go through the house and you come into the party, you're not in Detroit anymore. You're, you're in Theater Bazaar, and that's not anything of this world. That's what Halloween is. You leave yourself at home. Don't come out of the house as you. Don't do it. Why? You do it every day and it's boring and you know you don't like it, so you might as well go out and have fun. Theater Bazaar is the creation of John Donovan, the artist and dreamer, and Ken Poyer, the property owner and general contractor who brings his friends' imaginings to life in wood and steel. I'm an illustrator. My inspirations are vast. I have this crazy, passionate love for a whole lot of different arts and aesthetics and things like that. And I think that's my mind is so scattered. I think that's where I, why I love making this project so much because I can paint a banner and design a banner wall or there's a stage structure. So it's, it's set design and sculpture, architecture, painting, like all that stuff fills this really weird need. You know, it's like, how do you do that without this? Oh, we sold 2,200 tickets this year, 1,700 last year. It definitely seems to have gotten a little popular. Last year, we lost money. Years past, we've pretty much broken even. Oh, where does it go? It's endless. Not only do the volunteers not get paid, but we also buy tickets to the show. So we work around the clock for two months <laughs> for free, and we pay to come to the party. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> The artist cult. <laughs> it really is overwhelming the amount of people that come out. They really bust their ass and come day after day after work. It's just amazing. They completely cleaned 20 lots. Slowly but surely has evolved from blight to a carnival. There's no other city where you could do this. And no other neighbors would tolerate it for a millisecond. This neighborhood was a war zone two years ago. They were drug dealer houses that were literally being shot up on a regular basis. The police in our precinct are totally behind us. They come, they love it. John is an artistic director for sure. I would be, I would be, of course, the uh, foreman of the whole thing. Everything that John comes up with, I make sure it, it gets built. I'm a carpenter, a plumber, electrician, everything. My love of carnivals came from my dad liked to always go on road trips in the summer and we'd travel all over and like go to the Smoky Mountains a lot and there there was all sorts of crazy roadside attractions and these terrible tourist traps and wax museums and I love wax museums. This could be dangerous. attention. This could be dangerous. No feat such as this has ever been performed. Adults are weird. I think as a child everything is so much more alive and magical. I don't want to grow up. That would be horrible. No plan on it. <laughs> Dangerous. No feat such as this has ever been performed.